Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on the balance of payments. The balance of payments is essentially a record of all of the trade and financial transactions made between consumers, businesses and the government in one country with others. And these balance of payments figures tell us quite a bit about the, for example, the level and pattern of trade in goods and services across national borders. So the balance of payments, or BOP for short, is simply a financial record. Inflows of foreign currency are counted as a positive entry. So, for example, if the UK sells oil overseas, that's an inflow of currency. Outflows of currency are counted as a negative entry. For example, imports or capital outflows. Now, at A2, we need to make a distinction between the current account and the financial account of the balance of payments. And in this short topic video, we'll take you through the main account. The current account of the balance of payments is the main measure of a nation's external trade performance, whereas the financial account measures the value of inflows and outflows of financial capital across national borders. So in this topic video, we're just going to work our way through the basic balance of payments account. The first account is the current account, and that is made up of four separate balances. First of all, the balance of trade in goods, tangible things such as cars and washing machines and computers. The balance of trade in services, such as health, education, tourism and transport. And if we add one or two together, we get the balance of trade in goods and services. Our third aspect is net primary income. And this is the net inflow or outflow of items such as interest from savings held overseas, profits from subsidiary businesses owned and operated overseas, and also, crucially, migrant remittances, the inflow of income from people who have left their country of birth and are living and working in another nation. That's primary income. Net secondary income used to be called net transfers. And in the UK's context, that involves, for example, our net payments to the European Union, uh, spending on military aid and assistance, and our overseas development budget. So if we add one, two, three and four together, we get the country's current account balance. There's a couple of items on the capital account, and they basically involve the value of the sale of items such as patents, franchises, leases, and other items of sort of capital value. But the main focus is the current account, and the second main focus is the financial account. Now, the financial account is essentially big inflows and outflows of financial money across borders. Changes in the ownership of assets and liabilities, for example, between British residents and non-residents. Three aspects in particular stand out. One is the value of the inflows and the outflows, hence the net balance, of foreign direct investment such as building physical manufacturing capacity in the country. The second financial flow is portfolio flow. And this is the inflow and the outflow of debt, so loans taken out, for example, from a bank in another nation. Portfolio flows coming into the property market. And people buying and selling shares across national stock exchange, stock exchange boundaries. So foreign investment flows and portfolio flows are two key sources of external capital. There's also the balance of banking flows. Now, banking flows are very short-term money, often known as hot money, which come in and out of the banking system looking for the best risk-adjusted rate of return. So, for example, if the UK has lower interest rates than, let's say, another country, the United States, we might expect to see an outflow of banking money or hot money from the UK towards the United States where there could be a better rate of interest. So we have mostly the account in front of you at the moment. We have the current account, we have the financial account. The key point is that the balance of payments must balance. We have a balancing item in the figures and that's there to incorporate uh, estimated errors and omissions from the data. 
and countries at the end of the day have to make some adjustments via the IMF to the value of their reserves of gold and foreign currency. And when they do that, that helps the balance of payments overall to sum to zero. So what's the key point from this quite complex and detailed table? I think the main point to take is that if a country is running a current account deficit at the top there, to balance their payments up, they have to, they have to run a financial account surplus. If a country is running a current account deficit, they have to run a financial account surplus. On the other hand, if a nation is running a current account surplus, this means there's a net inflow of foreign currency into their economic system. And that would allow a nation to run a deficit on their financial account. So, for example, surplus foreign currency could be used to fund investment in assets located overseas. The balance of payments, however, must balance. If we include the balancing item and adjustments to the gold and foreign currency reserves, the balance of payments in a given year will balance. Now, from the UK point of view, we run a trade deficit in goods and services of around 2 to 3% of our national income. And when we include the, the primary income and the secondary income that we've mentioned in this topic video, our current account deficit is significantly higher than that. Indeed, in 2015, we ran a deficit of just over 5% of our national income. And we'll do a separate topic video on why countries operate current account deficits. You know, what are the underlying causes? So the British economy runs a current account deficit and therefore will need to run a financial account surplus. Here are some other countries that are running huge, you could say significantly and unsustainable current account deficits. Some of these figures are astronomically high. And on the other hand, there are countries, much bigger economies as it turns out, that are running enormous sustained current account surpluses measured as a GDP. Sorry, measured as a percentage of GDP. So, for example, Singapore in 2015 ran a current account surplus of one-fifth of its national output. Taiwan, 12% current account surplus. And three big countries that I've picked out here are all big current account surplus countries. Germany, the world's biggest manufacturing exporter. South Korea, a hugely successful exporting nation. And China, whose current account surplus is smaller as a share of GDP. 3.1% in 2015, but of course it's the world's second largest economy, so that translates into a surplus of hundreds of millions of dollars. Again, we'll do a separate topic video on the reasons why countries run current account surpluses and some of the consequences of that. But this has just been an introduction to the balance of payments, and in particular the difference between the current account and the financial account.